today we're doing a canning adventure. So do you remember when we got these for a dollar a bag? <laughs> now we did want to get some more ready meals made. So what I've decided to do is do split pea soup. So we are going to the Bernardin book and we are making woo, split pea soup. Now, if you look it up on the Bernardin website, it's actually listed as Habiton soup, so no biggie. Now, the recipe has got ham in it, but you can make this vegan slash vegetarian and just leave the ham out. This recipe, and we'll go through it just so you know, it processes for 90 minutes because pressure canning, low acid food. Split pea soup is a low acid food. Now, I was gonna say something else, but I don't remember what it was. But anyway, back to the point, Ball Bernard and the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Those are the ones that I do use the most because a lot of them are fabulous recipes. In case you didn't know, and if you've been here before, you guys already know, Ball, Bernardin, they're the same company, guys. Ball is the U.S. arm, Bernardin's the Canadian arm. And there are some differences to the cookbooks. Not a lot, but a little bit. I mean, there's a few different recipes because American flavors and Canadian flavors are not always the same. We know this. So we are going to get to town on this split pea soup. Now, the way it works, and it's super, super easy. You cook the beans. <laughs> so the way it works is you're going to put, I'm going to do a double batch, by the way, because these are 900 gram bags. The recipe calls for 454 gram bags, basically a pound. This is basically about a two pound bag. One whole bag and 16 cups of water. The recipe is for one pound, so half of this bag and eight cups of water. Now the reason why I'm doubling the recipe is just because I just don't want this half bag kicking around. I wanna use up the whole sealed bag. Let me show you what I got on the stove. Okay, now the recipe says bay leaves after the beans are cooked but i actually like the flavor of the bay so i put the bay in when i cook the peas this is the exact same way I do it if i'm just making soup for us to eat i filled up my massive measuring cup twice because this is an eight cup measuring cup now we'll just put the beans in and the water's already started to warm up it's on a medium high once it comes up to a rolling simmer, we're going to turn it right down, pop the lid on, and they'll cook for an hour. While those are cooking, we're gonna continue on with the rest of the recipe. So now what I wanna do is I do wanna prep it now, just so it's all ready to go. So the way this works is they will cook for about an hour till they're tender. Then we add the carrots, the onions, the ham, and technically the bay leaf, but I like to put it in earlier and it cooks for another half an hour. Now the recipe calls for allspice. If you don't like allspice, you don't have to put it in. I put a tiny bit in, they say a quarter teaspoon for a one pound recipe. I'll probably be lucky to put a quarter teaspoon in in the whole recipe. Alrighty, time to get some veggies all chopped up and the ham all chopped up and then it'll be completely ready to go for when that's done boiling. Okay, so the last thing is the ham. Now the recipe calls for one cup of chopped ham as well for each batch, but I'm just gonna chop up four of these little ham steaks. So these are those little ham steaks that we found at the Summerside Butcher Shop. Works out great. So we're just gonna dice all these up. It's probably gonna be pretty close to two cups maybe, I don't know. Actually, it might be a little bit more than two cups. <laughs> That's all right. Onions, carrots, ham. So there's probably more onions in here than I thought because um, I grabbed 
I probably could have got away with just the two larger onions, but I had that smaller one that I chopped up first and I didn't have use for a half an onion. So I just let it go. Carrots, there's pretty much spot on two cups, which is fabulous. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna set this in the fridge. The peas have just come up to that light simmering roll. So I'm gonna turn those down, put the timer on, let them cook for an hour, then we'll uh, put the rest of the soup together. Alrighty, these have been cooking for an hour. They smell good. Let me go get the veggies and the ham. So this is gonna be really, really tight to the top, but we'll see if we can make this work. Oh yeah, super tight to the top. Like really tight to the top. I should have been using the stock pot, but this is actually the biggest sauce pot. Sauce pot? This is the biggest pot that I own. That's not that massive stock pot. All right. So now for here, I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of salt. So when I've made the half recipe just for cooking, I put in half a teaspoon of salt for a single batch. But this is a double batch, so I'm putting in a full teaspoon of salt, a full teaspoon of pepper, and we're only just gonna kinda go a couple of shakes of the allspice. Just that tiny bit. All right, now this is going to cook again for another half an hour. And that'll get the veggies started. And while that is doing its thing, I'm gonna wash the jars. They're already clean, but of course, you know, safe canning, I'm washing them again, some nice hot soapy water. And I'm gonna set up the electric pressure canner. And then we'll uh, fish out the bay leaves and get this stuff in jars. Time to fill up the canner. So now the instructions for this canner says not to put any vinegar on the inside because of the coating. So I got to remember to do that. The stovetop Presto, you do put a little bit of vinegar in. Now this has a line in it. So I'm just filling up the water up to that point and I'll finish uh, setting up the canner. Okay. So when you turn this canner on, it automatically is on pressure can. Now, if I was doing water bath canning, just turn the dial and it'll actually go to boiling water can. Basically, water bath canning. So I'm gonna put it back to pressure can. I'm gonna put the lid on. Now, when you put the lid on, it's got a unlock, install, remove, and a lock. So Set the lid on, give it a turn to locked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the big button once. Now we set the time. Now the recipe says these need to pressure can for 90 minutes. So scroll until you get to 90, right there. And then you just push the button. So now I'm just gonna push that button Right now, it's warming. So as it stands right now, it's gonna keep warming up. When this is done warming, the actual cooking time on the pot back there, it'll be all done. Alrighty, the canner has gone off. Look at that beautiful soup. Oh my gosh. This stuff, oh, fabulous. So I've got all my clean jars. Now these are 750 milliliter jars. The reason why I picked the 750s is that way it's gonna be a good full meal for the pair of us. So I've got everything washed. I've washed my strainer again. We've washed the ladle. So let's get the soup into the jars. Ah, bay leaf. Ha ha, I thought I had them all. This first jar I'm gonna show you it asks for one inch headspace. So if you're curious, one inch headspace is gonna be right there at the neck of the jar, you see that? That way you've got enough space for the pressure, all good to go. 
Now, when I washed these jars, I made sure that there was no chips or cracks in them. So that way I was gonna have a good seal. And if I don't have enough space in the jars for this whole pot, to be honest, I'm just gonna put the rest in the freezer or we'll have it for lunch tomorrow. Either one works. And if you guys just want a really good split pea soup recipe, oh my gosh, look up the Bernardin split pea soup recipe. What I'll do is of course, I'll link it for you in the description below. Now Bernardin lists it as pea soup or habitant soup. I like kind of really depends on where you grew up in Canada. But this recipe just tastes great. I'm sorry, just saying. All righty, I'm gonna finish filling these up and then I'll show you what we do next. All righty, my jars are full and there's just enough left for me to have a tiny bit for today. Yay. All righty, let me get this pot out of here. All right, now I already washed the lids. You don't have to boil the modern lids, just so you know, in case you've seen that. And that was actually a standard practice at one point in time was boiling the lids, which you don't need to do anymore. So I'm gonna grab a paper towel with some vinegar and we're gonna clean down all these rims. So when I washed them, like I said, I checked the rims on all of them, looking for little cracks, little nicks, things like that. Because if you don't get a good seal, of course, well then now you've got a jar that you cannot process and put away. Also, this is also a good time to double check them as you go. And just take a really good look for any problems that might be along that top edge of the jars. Because why go through all the work if you're just gonna have to, you know, put it in something else? Nice, clean rims. Now we've already talked about it before. When you're putting the lids on, you don't crank them on. But I have discovered on this electric pressure canner, it's a good idea to tighten them just a little bit extra. Now this canner will hold seven jars, which is fabulous. And I have seven jars to go in. So that recipe, when I doubled it, was the perfect amount. And I'm pretty sure I put too many veggies in according to the recipe, but that's okay. Because everybody likes veggies. And before I actually washed all the lids, I did take a good look to make sure there was no defects on the ring as well. Because if you got a defect on the ring, it's not gonna seal. So if there's anything missing when it comes to that little red rubber ring on there, yeah, just don't use it. There we go, seven jars in. Okay, so we're putting the lid on. Setting it to lock. And we're taking the regulator off. Locking it down and now it's gonna heat. So once this is done heating, it'll beep. It'll vent for 10 minutes and that's when we put the regulator back on. So basically, this electric pressure canner from here is gonna do all the work. I have to admit, I am really glad I bought this thing. So, alrighty, we're gonna let it do its thing. We'll let it beep and let it finish out. Time to put the regulator on. Remember, use something. It's hot up there. All righty guys, it'll come up to pressure and 90 minutes, it'll be done. All right, this is that second bag of beans, but we are on cool down mode. Now, this will take probably about an hour, if not more. Like I've told you before, that guy right there will go down when it's done. Now it's just impatiently waiting. So same as the other pressure canners, you do not touch it. If you touch it, you'll release the pressure too soon, you release the pressure too soon, there goes all that work right down the drain. You might best pour the jars in the freezer and put it in the freezer. Now this one will tell me when it's done and that little knob will go down. If you're using um, a Presto dial canner like the manual one that I also have, 
watch the dial. When it's all the way down to zero, you're good. Now, normally when it gets all the way down to zero on that pressure gauge, I'll leave it for about another 20 minutes, just in case. But yeah, so now I have to wait for this to go. I have pizza dough, because we're having pizza for dinner, in the bread machine, wrote the menu for the week. Yeah. And then I'll show you what to do next with these jars when they're all done. Okay, we are going to unlock. Are we ready? Now, this is gonna be the same as when you buy like a jar of pea soup. Ooh, happy pings. It will separate, see? You see this? Don't worry about it. When you're ready to eat it, you just give them a nice, good, healthy shake. It's perfect. Oh, not a lot of siphoning. That's wonderful. All right, let's get these out. Take it out. Seven jars of soup. Yay. All righty, guys. So these are going to sit here until tomorrow. Not going to touch them. Make sure they're all sealed in the morning, and then we'll wash the jars. Yeah. That stuff, it looks weird when you pull it out, but trust me, it tastes great. Check it out. All done. That was the oven, sorry. Anyway, split pea soup is done. Yay. This recipe, ridiculously simple. Like ridiculously simple. If you're not a canner, you don't do wanna can things, but maybe you got a good size freezer. Trust me, this soup freezes well and it even tastes just as good when you take it out of the freezer and warm it up. It's a simple recipe, five ingredients. Ham, peas, onions, carrots. <clears throat> Ham, peas, onions, carrots, oh my gosh, and the nutmeg. Water, if you want to include it, six ingredients. Not that much. It's a very, very easy recipe. You can doll it all up, put it in the, in the freezer, put it in containers, and then you go, ready meals. Now, when it comes to the safe canning, you're always gonna have your hands on the jars. You're looking for the nicks, you're looking for the cracks, you're gonna feel the jar, make sure everything's good. Perfect. But have we ever really seriously talked about what happens after you're done? So after you're done canning something, and you've all heard the word siphoning, so when you're doing canning, the essential, essentially it's drawing the air out and this is a vacuum that's inside. So when it creates the vacuum, things can come out underneath the lid. Well, when that happens, you're gonna have the ugly around the ring. So after you have that ugly around the ring and you get them nice and cool, you take the ring off. And when you look on the inside, you'll probably notice that there's actually some of the product on the inside. Well, you take this guy off, wash him, put him away for next use, and then you have to wash these jars in hot soapy water. That takes everything around the top. So when I wash them, what I do is I take my cloth, of course this is my clean tea towel, nice warm soapy water, and I do this, okay? Get everything around the ring off, or the rim off, sorry. So once you get everything around the rim off, then you don't have to worry about any residue that's on the outside going bad and then forcing that lid up. And then of course, now you got a jar you have to dump, which is not fun. So post pressure canning, it's actually real easy. Leave it on the counter 24 hours, take the ring off. So this little guy, give it the good hold, you know, lid test. Perfect. Wash it, label it. In my case, I do put the year 24. That way I know I did make it this year in case one of these jars kind of get pushed somewhere else. This one I know is split pea soup. I can tell by looking at it. If this was stewed tomatoes, I would write stewed tomatoes. If it was chili sauce, I'd write chili sauce. If it was salsa, I'd write salsa. Even though they all look slightly different, that way you're not gonna actually confuse it with something else. Tomato sauce with basil as opposed to just tomato sauce. So like I said, certain jars, I'll just put the year. That way I know what year they were made. I know what ones to use first. I think this is the easiest. Hi, Yuki. <laughs> I think this is the easiest actual canning recipe, like I said, we've done together. So 
I'm gonna move these jars out of the way a little bit. Now, the Bernardin recipe, once again, it's in the Bernardin book. There are other fabulous soup recipes, same thing, that you don't have to can, but there are some that are really good, like roasted leek and tomato soup. That one just, oh, it just sounds fabulous. I'm just saying, it does. But there's a whole section, I'm using my Epicure packages for bookmarks. <laughs> but there's a whole section for soups, stews, and stocks. Chicken stock, we have chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, vegetable soup, the split pea soup that we just used. Oh yeah, that's seven ingredients. I forgot the bay leaf. <laughs> we have chili that you can put in because a lot of people actually do like to can chili to make life easy. Now this ch canned chili recipe, I don't know if anybody remembers, but I actually miss the coney sauce that you should be able to get at A&W here in Canada. This chili reminds me of the coney sauce, just saying. There is a good recipe in here as well for chicken soup. Now, one thing to think about, of course, when you're making chicken soup, no rice, no barley, no pasta. Don't forget, you cannot can those safely grains and grain products will ferment and then you've just ruined a beautiful candy job just remember guys no grains no grains pasta is a grain remember that it's made from wheat all right <laughs> but uh there's spaghetti sauce there's beef stew with veggies which we've made together but there are a lot of recipes in here that I usually just cook sometimes and try them out first, see how they taste. So anyway, that's split pea soup with ham or habitat soup. Super, super easy. And if you don't feel like making it, just do what some people do. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so that's it for me today. That was a quick little canning video not really a quick canning process because it does cook for an hour cook again for another half an hour and then can for an hour and a half and then of course the rest of the time in that so 90 two hours three hours so it's about a four hour process give or take to get these fabulous seven 750 milliliter jars of split pea and ham soup have a great day we'll talk to you again soon find another canning recipe for us to play with. And uh, so we'll see you next time as we do another canning adventure on Simpler Living PEI. Bye for now.